Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the first death battle cast of Skeletober Skeletober. Okay, so <laughs> what are oh, we God. doing? What is happening? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we are fast approaching episode 300 of Death Metal Cast. I know, right? Um, and Crazy. instead of just doing like a special episode 300, we decided eh, it's October. Let's just do like this Halloween thing where we do a bunch of skeleton matchups. That's appropriate for episode 300 celebration, right? Uh, sure. We don't know. We don't Fuck care. Yes. It's fine. And we thought it would be funny. And yeah, it's also we thought it honestly. Would be funny. Somebody said the pun Skeletober celebration. And we were all uh, we're like, yes, sold. What are those doing yeah. it based on that? Yeah. So I was late to the meeting, and you guys had Skeletober already. And then I was like, can we call it a celebration? And, then, <laughs> and that was my yes, yes. It was a big. It was a, it was a celebratory sort of idea. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. Um... <laughs> By the way, that's water. Skeletacular. Every time Wonderful. he that's drinks water. from that bottle, it looks like he's <laughs> drinking straight vodka, but it's water. If I was drinking, and I say this every time, but if I was if this was straight vodka and I was downing it like that, then I feel like that would be worth its own sort of hour long podcast, like, you know, discussing just how I was able to do that. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Liam, the context of yeah. right, yeah. new podcast. <laughs> Anytime I'm up against you, Liam, if you want to do that, just drink oh. nothing but vodka, please. Dave. <laughs> yeah, they... um, I remember well, I was, I was, oh, yeah, never mind. I was going to tell you. We, we oh, do no, have totally three good. more of these Skeletober episodes. So one of them oh, could be <laughs> Liam versus. I did that accidentally vodka. one time and it was vodka and I did not realize it. It was in a friend's car and they had a water bottle and I was like, do you have some new water? Cause it's really hot today. So I took a swig of it and uh, it was, it was pure vodka and I had to go outside and like spit it out and like almost puke. Cause it was, it was like hot. Vodka. It had been in the car. It was like Ugh. 90 degrees. And it, it was like the greatest thing I'd ever fucking had in my life. <laughs> yeah, our friend um, Scott yeah. did that at a convention when he like just, <laughs> he replaced some of the water bottles with pure vodka, so you didn't know what you were gonna get. Oh yeah, shit! That, so that's the trick. When it's drink you can, I mean, you can just sniff. I feel like even, like if the smell is intense enough, if you're bringing. Oh, once it up, you knew like the whiff. Yeah, yeah. yeah once you knew. <laughs> <laughs> if you were yeah, aware that, that that's what the chance was, even yeah. an, an unexpected whiff of of straight vodka is like a bit of a miserable experience, you know, exactly. like it's like, oh, cool. Gasoline. <laughs> Nothing says oh. skeletons like vodka. <laughs> there we go. Yes. All right. This is how we're starting this off. All right. So uh, let's get into this. We have our first skeleton matchup of the month, which is going to be Eins versus Grimm characters from Overlord and Billy and Mandy. I yeah. don't know anything about these characters. So this is a, this, this is, is a great matchup. To. It's you'll find it's that like, the theming uh, for these matchups. is not, uh, the most rigorous we've ever had. It's, but, uh, it's weird, but there's actually a lot of connection. It's like they they're two big cloaks. Right. Yeah. There's two supposedly really spooky guys who are actually secretly just giant dorks. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, you know what? It works out great. It's a perfect matchup for them. <laughs> All right. Uh, as always, we are going to be doing this with uh, uh, one of us representing each character. Uh, in this case, Billy will be repping. Eines and Liam will be representing Grimm. Uh, and at the end of the argument, at the end of the show, we will be voting for who should win in a death battle. Uh, and this will be me and Chad voting, as well as you all watching this live right now. If you don't watch this live, we do this every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Central Time. Um, I see a bunch of people in the chat with a bunch of different color badges going up, which is awesome. Uh, oh, love yeah. to see you guys. Thank you so much uh, for joining us and for supporting us. Um, all right, let's let's get to this because uh, I'm, I'm sure we have a bunch to talk about. And I also kind of want to talk about uh, later on uh, the latest death battle that just came out, mm. Trunks versus Silver. Yeah. Which ah. I'm very proud of the team on how this one came together. Um, if you have not seen it yet, definitely check it out. We'll be talking a little bit about it. We might spoil it. I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll see. We'll, we'll let you know ahead of time. Um, but also, uh, the next time is is a weird one. So we, we'll definitely, you know, talk a little bit about that. So if you have not seen Trucks vs. Silver, be sure to check it out. Okay. Uh, uh, so, Effie, that's my new username. says, surely someone named Billy should be with Grimm. <laughs> I, Listen, right? I was going to ask, do I get a vote that. against Grimm or for Grimm? Because I think that's an honorary thing I, I earned. I think you right? have to <laughs> vote for Grimm. Actually, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's that true for Billy, vote, no. But it's only for Grimm. Well... <laughs> 
All right. Um, <laughs> well, then let's go ahead and start with Billy, but not for Grim. Billy, you want to give us a 60 second rundown on why you think Eins, the Overlord, I'm assuming he's the Overlord of the title, <laughs> should win this fight? Well, as something of a Billy myself, I. Time stop! Delay magic, true death. Momonga is a level 100 overlord elder lich skeleton mage, leader of the infamous monster guild Einzulgon, whose name he took as his own. His domain is the expansive, never conquered guild dungeon Nazarek, and the countless powerful, fanatically loyal NPCs located within. Einz has memorized over 700 spells, has numerous class and species abilities, resistance to most debuffs that affect the living, and a total resistance to all magical and physical damage made by entities not comparable in level. He has an instant access pocket dimension inventory, with many powerful in-game and potent pay-to-win cash shop items. Notably, he is also an expert PvP player killer, known for beating odds stacked decidedly against his build. Einzul Gorn! The ruler of death. This reaper is boned. I can't believe I used that dumb pun. I ruined it. <laughs> oh, and resurrection. Um, wow. Okay. Can anybody see where this fucking thing came from? <laughs> Now that's how you kick off Skeletober! <laughs> yes! Skeletober! <laughs> Holy wow, my God. shit! I had no idea that was- Yeah! Skeletober! Yeah! Skeletober! <laughs> I had no idea that was coming, Billy. Wow. I and if what was coming? If you're an away. audio listener, you should probably yeah. check out the video version of this yeah. one. Whoa. That was incredible. Whoa. I you, you always commit. Like... Yeah. Whoa. That, that one, was, I have that no idea what you guys are talking about. That was like a- that was like- that was like, whoa. I almost well, like, yeah. I almost want to give it to 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 Eins just based on right on, a, on a, you know how colorful that was. Even though as you were going as you were like going over the details, I was like, oh yeah, Eins is fucking boned. Um, but uh, <laughs> all right, well, Jesus Christ. Sixty seconds. Here you go. Why is uh, Eins fucking boned? Uh, <laughs> Wink. Grim. It's, it's actually interesting because I don't really know about a lot about Eins before Billy just came to there. Oh, no, um, sorry. <laughs> but uh based on what billy has just laid out uh grim is literally a better eins uh grim has essentially every kind of magic imaginable um he is the grim reaper so he literally controls life and death he cannot die he has no soul and he can kill anything including things that don't have souls like like a cell phone like he could just touch it and now it has a soul and it's also dead. Uh, <laughs> he has outlived the end of time. His scythe is an un is an indescribably powerful artifact which has literally infinite power and can do things that are infinitely powerful. Um he has every hacks imaginable. Um Ainz's resistances won't matter because Grim is on an entirely different level of power, which Billy just said that like he has resistances to things that are only at his level of power. Uh, yeah, no, Grim is better than everyone. <laughs> uh, I wish I had, like, a whole, like, Liam, video that I uh, pre-recorded. No, uh -huh. to cut <laughs> Pre-recorded? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, so, actually this is just the thing. I, I saw a lot of conversation about this going in, and I'm kind of like, a lot of people are convinced that Grim is significantly more powerful. I'm not seeing it. I watched a shitload of Billy and Mandy over the weekend just to remind yeah. myself of the character. He's got Toon Force, he's got durability, but he's a loser. He does not win at anything. He just kind of fails everything he does and just so happens to be durable enough to pull himself back together from getting blown up or whatever there is to happen. Do you um, want the infinite energy feat? Uh, they, they, the, please do. Yeah. I mean, so are you going so, ham right out the gate again? We're not supposed I mean, I to do that. I might as well. I might, if the challenge is that I mean, Grim... we can. Yeah, okay, let me just say... Like, <laughs> but yeah, it, sounds like, it sounds like Grim always loses, so it doesn't matter if he totally he's got is, infinite he energy. He totally is a loser. It's a comedy series, and the I, the joke is that Grim is like the Grim Reaper and a being of unbelievable, unmatched power, but is always like... He is enthralled to these two small children because he lost a bet to them. Um, So he's constantly being humiliated by that. Um, But uh, Grim, Gr Grim's scythe, Grim himself is always is always made clear to be an incredibly powerful being, and his scythe is always plot specifically always like the most powerful object in the universe. Um, and uh, he was able to blast Mandy with enough energy to make her grow infinitely large 
at an infinite rate. That's a quote. So much so that she outgrew the universe, destroyed it, and entered into an entirely new, like, dimension of existence <laughs> larger than anything imaginable. Ham. So that would require, as quoted, an infinite amount of energy. And that's, like, that's literally just, like, I'm going to make you grow. That's just a grow spell. But grow so hard that you outstrip the entire universe and all of existence and destroy everything. <laughs> well, okay. So yeah, Fraser. I do. I How definitely want to get back to the scythe again. I'm just. Uh, I curious. want to get back to the scythe in a bit because I have a, I have a uh, road to get there. I know. So just I know. just like just like uh, general thing. So Ainz is actually a guy named uh, Suzuki Satoru. He lives in the year like 2138, I think, and he plays a <laughs> game called Jigdrasil, which is like a, a VR MMO. He's the guild leader in that game where he played the skeleton overlord character that he plays. And he was logged in on the day the game shut down, which transported him somehow into a completely different fantasy universe, along with his tomb that he uh, he and his guildmates had built, which brought along all the NPCs, which suddenly gained sentience, which gives them all completely individual powers based on their biographies and their settings that they had at the time. Uh, these these are now completely uh, loyal to him it, it, being some of whom are extreme level intellects. I'm assuming Liam prob we're probably not going to involve other people. Because I think that uh, gives Ayn's an extreme advantage just based on numbers. Um, not that he really needs it. But that's kind of like just can. rough he, backstory of, he can his, summon, of him. Yeah. I mean, Grim can summon so, like any monster he wants. But but I mean, yeah, I think general so, death battle rules, also, it's just. I didn't I mean, realize it's just one on one, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, the original exactly. isekai. Shit, what if we did <laughs> like that? Man. Oh my god, that would be a perfect isekai episode to do. If we ever did one, we'd do like the whoever the standard like isekai protagonist is versus somebody is like Captain, Captain N. Captain N in the game. Is Kirito? Like, like, what is it? Uh, is Kirito is a yeah, true yeah. matchup yeah, Kirito. against Captain N. Kirito yeah. versus Captain N. How does that sound, guys? <laughs> dude, that'd be <laughs> all guys. I'm all it's about that, versus... dude, Captain N. <laughs> I'll rep Captain N. Like, sign me up. Let's go. Are you going to get make the jacket, Chad? I think that's the only way. Oh, I would love to get that jacket. Are you writing me? Right. Actually, in, the, um, in the NES controller belt buckle? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So on the topic of summoning creatures, like if they can summon them, yeah, technically that is part of their arsenal. Uh, it, I, it gets well, a little I mean, tricky so, there, but, you know. Right. Technically we summoning, could summoning, Yeah, Yeah, summoning, summoning, I believe they both are pretty pretty similar in that yeah. regard, except that Ainz's are obviously, it's an MMO, so it's made more for attacking than Grimm's kind of like whatever the hell he wants uh, any given time with can the anything yeah basically. right yeah. um so Ainz himself physically is superhuman he can lift and toss like a dragon's corpse easily without any effort he is able to immobilize and crush a person who would be considered above peak uh, powered human being uh with his bare hands uh he is supersonic speed in fact in terms of being able to dodge and attack uh things that are uh supernaturally quick uh durability he is is self Stated to be bones are as tough as steel, for example. Uh, and again, these only react to things that would be considered a level 100, which is where things get a little bit weird with Grimm because he doesn't have a level. Uh, but the thing about Grimm is, in the show, he is not shown physically by himself to be particularly strong or quick without the scythe. He, and these are things that Ainz has that Grimm does not. He is immune to hunger or thirst. He's physically tireless. He's disease immune, sleep immune. Not be mind altered, paralysis immune, poison immune, critical hit immune, energy drain immune, electric electricity immune, uh, which makes Grimm wet himself. By the way, uh, he can see in the dark. He has immunity to death spells. Uh, so those are all just basic things that does he has not true immunity for Grimm. to Grimm. death I, spells. Yeah, what is a death yeah. spell in in this universe? Yeah, so yeah. death spell within an MMO context, which is like an instant death spell, you would be immune to it in its natural state. If you're casting a thing at that his you. at his level of power, yes, correct. Yes, yeah, okay. I, I also well, want to correct, I want to that, correct that. the record on, on the strength thing. You said he doesn't have strength feats on his own. Uh, does bowling with the moon count? No, because he used his scythe, Liam. He used his scythe to tether count. to the moon. To I guess he brought it, it down. Yes, he, he did. He used his arm also... to swing <laughs> to throw the moon. Does fighting Nurgle, who threw a baseball so hard it destroyed the sun, count as a strength feat? <laughs> it doesn't count all the time because he's a tune character, so it's variable. It doesn't matter. Oh, 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 oh! I don't think anybody here is going to buy the. Um, That's true. Because, uh, that was a desperate. Force. That was a desperate gambit. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 he always uses the scythe 
he does not does always the scythe use the scythe. Grant him he, he magical still uses ability. It primarily. Uh, no, he his scythe has been stolen before, and he's still a super powerful. He's still the grim. Yeah, Reaper didn't Billy and Mandy scythe. steal it in one episode or something? So hey, he's stealing the scythe is note, like stealing the Infinity Gauntlet, but it's stealing the Infinity Gauntlet from Dark Side. That's right. The on idea. that note, <laughs> because we're on that topic, and I have a bunch uh, to show for it, Brian. Uh, if you could bring up uh, the first of the scythe stolen I- images, so. Uh, and maybe you can just go Wait, along you brought with material so, so, to use against well, that's, him? That's, that's the, the end of it. You see, that's so, so Widow has his scythe stolen constantly. <laughs> this is just from the movie. His scythe was stolen by a pumpkin-headed man, Billy, Mandy, Irwin, Billy's dad, Billy's mom, C- Billy's cousin, Billy's cat, Dracula, General Scar, Principal Good Vibes, Mrs. Claus, Dude, the Secret Principal Snake Good Club, Vibes. the Army, <laughs> Scout Troop 701, the Sleaze Stacks, President Lincoln, <laughs> the Mailman, the Dingleschmidt Sisters, the Boogeyman, a llama, and a turkey salad sandwich, hold the mayo. <laughs> Wait, so, what? so anybody can steal this scythe yeah yes he can also yes, summon it back can... with the snap of his fingers though so See, i don't know that that's necessarily true though because grim is sent to other dimensions and incapacitated constantly and very rarely does he bring the scythe out to get free he's just trapped yeah constantly. i mean it's a cartoon where the joke is that like Grimm is a oh doofus. no so now 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 that's a cartoon works in your favor i see I, I think it does i think that like when we analyze characters in death battle, we take them at their consistent high ends and not at <laughs> low ends. Like when Krillin threw a rock at Goku and made him scream in agony. Um, <laughs> well, <before. laughs> so like, yeah, the it joke was is Krillin that Grimm is like, is like a doofus and a loser, but like he is so much more powerful than I, like what is Ainz's most powerful feat in general? Just period. Uh, and there's... is it the same as infinity destroying a universe? <laughs> <laughs> is it the I same as bowling the, the moon the either? Grim cannot do those Liam. things. Grim cannot start <laughs> those things without the scythe, Liam. It's necessary. So here's the thing. Ions has an ability that lets him know everything about an item. Uh, uh, I don't remember the name off the top of my head. But he can, he can scan the item, basically, like an MMO, uh, and know what it is. He will know instantly that this scythe is the crux of what goes on with Grim, because he is a, he's an accomplished PvP player. He knows to look for weaknesses and study and, and, and go for those. So he's going to know instantly that's the thing he can go after. He's also got abilities that destroy magic items. Doesn't so that just apply to his theory, MMO stuff? Right, no, it, it, it actually transferred with him and got stronger in the new place that he's in. So it's naturally stronger than it would have been in the MMO because it had to account for the flavor text becoming so, real. Billy, yeah, he, yeah. Can just, he can just scan through someone's info and just know what they've got going on? Yes. Just like your ISP can if you're using if you're not using a VPN like ExpressVPN, hey. the first sponsor of this episode. We love ExpressVPN. They've supported us for a long time, so you should be supporting them. Uh, using the internet without ExpressVPN is like checking in your baggage at the airport without a lock. You might think everything is kept private, but you never know who's going through your extremely private stuff. When you go online without a VPN, internet service providers can see every single website you visit. Yep. Uh, they can legally sell this information even without your consent to ad companies and tech giants. Ever notice how, like, you go to a website and then suddenly you're getting advertisements for very similar things? Yep. All right. So when you use ExpressVPN, your online activity is protected. ExpressVPN creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so nobody can spy on your online activity. And what we like most about uh, it is that it's super easy and reliable. No matter what device you're on, all you have to do is fire up the app, click one button, just one button. It works on phones, laptops, even routers, so everyone who shares your Wi-Fi will be protected. So secure your online activity today at expressvpn.com slash dbc and get an extra three months of ExpressVPN free. That's expressvpn.com slash dbc. Expressvpn.com slash dbc. We love ExpressVPN. Can't stress it enough. It's super easy, super good. You should be using a VPN. And it should be ExpressVPN because they've supported us and our whole company for a long time. So we love them. Top tier transition, Dad. Thank also, you. if you are using <laughs> ExpressVPN, when you are potentially inevitably pulled into an isekai, isekai um, <laughs> another company won't steal you as well. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, I- I'm seeing some questions in the chat. Uh, can the scythe hurt Grim? Or is he, is uh, he it can. It has a curse. Scythe? It has a curse that anything, any wound it creates is permanent. So it could permanently like cut off Grimm's head and he'd have to like be holding his head around, but he can't die from it. Although he has put it back on. I don't think it's really connected. I think that's the issue with Grimm is that you can't really cut his head off because there's nothing 
air. It's just kind of sure. Floating. But in, in any sure. in any case, the 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 scythe and this would apply to Ains as well. Like any wound it creates is is gonna stay there forever. And if it kills, so then what if there's it, no regenerating I'd from like, it. Oh. Go ahead, Chad. I was just gonna say, like, you know, what if it said some like really mean things and then hurt his soul, and then and then he couldn't recover from that? That sounds realistic to an episode. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I get it. Wrote me a second. Sorry, I, I love that you were like, <laughs> "What's the logical thing here?" When Chad's making a dumb joke. Like, okay. <laughs> like, uh, condemned angel in the about? chat says that it can kill him. Right? So are you sure it can? No, nope. kill him. It can't. He. They're they're mistaking the the fact that um uh Jack what the what the pumpkin head. Was going to use it to uh, cut off Grim's head and keep it off permanently, but Grim wouldn't have died from that. He just had his head. Cut okay. Off. Grim has got pretty impressive uh, resilience to yeah. death. Yeah, I mean, and he can and he can be so... completely disintegrated and regenerate. So he's the Grim Reaper. Like doesn't have a soul. A... He can't die. He can't die. I just want to put I just want to put that out there. I put that in the intro. We kind of scooched past it. Uh, can then die. Uh, well, makes this difficult. Angel's got makes one this... more thing to say. <laughs> it says, "Look up the Mars Reaper." You know what that what that's referring to? Look up the Mars Reaper. Grim I mean, King there are definitely inside. multiple Reapers in the universe because I've... the Re Prim Reaper's position is a job that he got in junior high. Yes, uh, through a vote at the school because uh, accidentally he won by scaring people. He didn't intend to. Oh, yeah. It's not a natural Mars position Reaper. of his. It's just something that can be taken away and granted. More. He's got probably naturally Morg, yeah, uh, Brazilian up. skeleton mm -hmm. powers, but I'd like to get your thing theory on something, Liam. So, yeah, okay. please. Within y Yggdrasil, there are things called world items. They're said to be parts of the world tree from the game. Yeah. There's like 200 of them in the game. Einzulgon, the guild, had 11 of them, including two of the most powerful in the universe, just for point of reference. I think the next closest guild was like three, so they had a lot of these things. Uh, world items prevent you from being directly affected by another world item. Now, there's two choices here. Either Grim Scythe will count as a world item, which means its effect on Einz is negated, as long as he's got one, which he does, absolutely. Or, it's not a world item, and Grimm has no resistance to Wish Upon a Star or Shooting Star. Now, here's where I'm going with this. Shooting Star is a ring that he has on his finger that casts the spell Wish Upon a Star, which, again, he can cast on his own as well. It allows the user to wish for anything they want. Yeah. And it happens. Grimm has that, too. He has, <laughs> a, he has a magical item that allows you to wish for anything you want as well. Sure. There's a couple, so, actually. So do these count as world items or not? Are they resistant to each other's thing, or can this like happen? This. I, don't, I don't think they count as world. I, I mean, it's Billy okay, yeah, because they're, because they're completely different things, right? So yeah, all right, Kate. So yeah. the, neither, one neither one has the resistance to Who's faster? Effect. How fast is Ainz? I believe that physically Ainz is faster than, than Grimm. How fast? Except when you push things, you know, Tomb Force. He's definitely supersonic. But here's the thing. Grim, Grim? I, started this off with time, I started this off with time stop for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mines will start every fight with time stop. It freezes time. Yeah. Grim has no defense against Grim it. also has time During stop. This... He has time stop. <laughs> he has time slow. He has, Grim he is has, not going he has to start fast with it. forward, rewind. Okay, let, let, Grim let Billy is finish. not going to start finish. with time stop. Yeah. He, he's going to get time stopped immediately. And Mines uh -huh. is going to use that time to do something to him. Now, he can't, he can't cast effect, uh, spells that will hurt him during yeah. that period. But he can do... Things that will hurt him later, or he can delay those spells to occur immediately afterwards, which is something he's very good at. Uh, so he's immediately going to have the initiative in, in, in this fight. I'm positive. Grim flew from the sun to the earth in about one second. That's 500 times faster than life. <laughs> so Grim has initiative, actually. Kaboom. And Grim can stop time not... and do all of those at the same Grim time. Grim well. is going to be going to say something stupid. Grim can during touch that people and instantly kill them. He's the Grim Reaper. <laughs> like, like he touched a cell phone and then a little. The soul of the cell phone flew out of it, and the cell phone stopped working. <laughs> like Ains actually it, has a very similar instant, ability to instant death. To that, and that that Sorry, Ains doesn't have a resistance other. to because he's so much less powerful. Literally, I don't agree. Infinitely less. I powerful. I really do not agree. I only <laughs> I only believe the scythe has the level of power you're talking about. Grim, Grim is holding the scythe. When... He owns the scythe. It's like saying right. like Punisher except, can only shoot because he's been time he stopped. <laughs> except he's been time stopped because he's not going to do that. Any attacking right off the bat, that's not how Grim behaves. And secondly, you can take that sight from him easily. It's happened numerous times in the series, even when he's holding it and talking about how he can't, cannot have that taken from him. Someone just takes it out of his hand because it's funny. It just that, happens. It's that super is, okay. easy to take from him. So there is a... We, we've never actually had addressed this in Death Battle before because we haven't really had reason to. But there, there is technically a weakness to Toon Force. The weakness is... Toon Force works in favor of humor. So if there is a way to make something funny happen to the uh, 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 
against Graham. The wielder of Toon Force. Yes, to the wielder of the Toon Force. Perhaps that would go against (laughs) them. That would work against them. Here's the problem with that, though. Grimm's abilities, Toon Force is is when uh, a character in a cartoon has superpowers that are given no explanation because they are, the explanation is because they are a cartoon. Grimm's powers aren't Toon Force. They're magic. He's the Grim Reaper with infinite supply of magical energy, and it's specifically contextualized in the series as his magic, as his superpowers. It isn't Toon Force. Toon Force is when there's no, like Popeye being able to turn things into their composite elements. That's not what happens when you punch things, but it's funny, right? That's Toon Force. This I is think the, magic. Oh. He's a magical character existing in a cart. Not the same. Thing. Right, no, I would think that the Toon Force in this scenario would be partially his durability as well as the way the universe reacts to him trying to win. The universe orients itself to the fact that Grimm will lose if it's funny and pretty much lose any, any time he's trying to win at something. Mm-hmm. I can think of very few episodes where he came out ahead at the very end of it. And the thing about Ions is, while he presents himself as a super, super serious, spooky skeleton man, inside, he's a Japanese salary man who has no idea what he's doing uh, and is concerned about uh, uh, becoming this accidental dictator that he's turning into. Uh, and says, so he like, has a comedic has magic. through line. Ions can negate magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to reiterate, he can negate magic that is at the same power level as he is. Uh, Grim is a infinitely powerful being. Like I'm sorry, really but I didn't mean to I'm still, I'm still just, not buying just it. That's just reiterating that for the people uh, listening. Yeah, I'm still not buying it. I'm buying the, the scythe is an infinitely power item, powerful item, which Ainz, upon seeing what it can do, is immediately going to want and take because and he's a collector scan. that likes that kind of stuff. He's going to go for it immediately because he's going to see what it does and why he should have that forever. And once he has it, he's going to make sure Grim does not get it back. And then he's going to go for it, and then again. Grim is going to tap him, or just look at him because he doesn't need to make physical contact, and then he, and then Ainz will instantly die. Ainz has the same he power, the Liam. He has the same power. He can okay. touch you and do the same but thing. But Grim is significantly more powerful, right? <laughs> all right, all right, there all right. You go. All right. Um, Grim has survived I, I do want, the I, universe I touch destroyed on... on top of him. My, Mandy smiled oh. and erased the entire universe in a giant temporal black hole. Well, thank and he goodness, and Billy and Mandy survived, involved. though they were, they were affected by it. They became the power. I was actually going to ask about the black hole because uh, some people in, in chat were talking about how uh, uh, Ions can create black holes and in, in, uh, in vortexes and whatnot. And I was just looking at... So I was looking at this Martian uh, Grim Reaper. Um, now, reading through it, I'm, I don't understand completely what I'm reading because I don't know what goes on <laughs> in Billy and Mandy. Uh, I'm not familiar with the show. Um, but it mentions, at least on the wiki page, that um, essentially the Martian Grim Reaper shows Grim a bunch of vaporized, the ashes of a bunch of vaporized uh, deaths. Yeah. A bunch of other Reapers. Yeah. Disintegrated. Yeah. Um, so... Also, at the end of the episode, um, Morg, the Martian Reaper, is defeated by being sucked into a vortex. A black hole is, you know, equivalent or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's how he's defeated. And apparently, he's never seen again because that's where the Wikipedia entry ends. Um, so if, that, if all of that applies to Grimm, does that mean that A, Grimm can be disintegrated and killed? And B, that a black hole, even if he could survive, could... Um, essentially defeat him by trapping him, ensnaring him, uh, bringing him out of the battle, and making him helpless. Grimm has survived being disintegrated, like his entire body, like to Ash. Um, and uh, he can open up portals, so there's no real way to, like, EFR him. That's battlefield I removal. Still don't, I don't reason. think that's true, Liam. There's at least three episodes I can think of where he's pulled into another place that he does not want to be, and he clearly cannot escape on his own because he doesn't want to be there. And there, so there are back. times when he has opened up a portal in different dimensions and right. he's gone right it, through, like Rick. Right, it's not. It's not so, all consistent. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's the. That's the I would, I would say characters. it's not consistent. Rather, than okay, it's not, he is real quick. Of doing but that. he needs a scythe, I believe, to open those portals, at least consistently. Uh, no, so I, again, he can open up his portals with it. Uh, just, can he? Yeah, I've seen him use the scythe every single time he opens a portal. Uh, he does use the scythe of. often, but he can open up portals on his. So own. he can do it on his own. Yeah. Well, is there just, an example? Is there an like, episode that you know of where he uses or he doesn't use the scythe to do it? Uh, I don't know what the episode are, is called. Like, are there actual examples of him using magic without the scythe, or does he require? Oh yes, oh yeah, yeah. he has. Oh yeah, yeah, he has definitely tons of magic, magic that without, he the scythe. without the okay. scythe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I, I want to touch. I want to ask something because we've spent a lot of time talking about like, can 
Grim die. Can Eins kill Grim? Yes. 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 And I want to flip it. Nope. nope. I want to flip it right now. <laughs> yeah. Can oh. Eins die? Conceivably, if you reduce yeah. his what it would be considered his health to to zero, he could. So we've uh, talked about him being immune items. to a bunch of things. Right. Magic, lightning, electricity, fire, whatever. Um, so is has there ever been an occasion where he's been hurt? Very rarely has he been hurt because most of the people in the New World, which again are con- the, the people that could do this, would be considered above peak human. Uh, Very rarely. So there is an occasion right. where he's been hurt. Like the strongest person typically in that world would be like 30 and he's 100. So yeah, yeah, he could be hurt by somebody who's equivalent uh, level to him. Uh, an instance of that happening was one of his uh, NPCs, Shaltir, was uh, mind controlled by uh, a world item at one point, and so she was aggressive to him and had to be uh, attacked to prevent her from, you know, being a loose agent out in the world. She was being mind controlled. Uh, actually, her build was a hard to his build. Like, she should have been able to beat him, and because he is so skilled at PvP, he was able to game out her strategy and beat her in that fight. This in what way was she built? She she is a she what is, is a, the counter? She is a Valkyrie uh, that can cast uh, holy magic and uh, fire okay. magic, which is two of the things that he's actually. Uh, so uh, it's necromancy versus oh, holy magic. Oh, some weaknesses. Kind of gotcha. All right. <laughs> we just we just gonna um, casually try and dust that under the rug. We're <laughs> not gonna talk about that shit. That's a Liam's job. Well, I mean, I'm assuming Grim does not have holy water hidden underneath his robe, does he? <laughs> Uh, let me check. He has a, I a honestly, trunk full of like, like most of his of... stuff in the trunk is 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 evil, but I imagine he's got quite a bit in there. So yeah, hey, look because I don't want to not get to this. So here's the thing: Heinz, yeah. his ability as an overlord, the thing that he would work toward to build to get to that class, his ability. <laughs> sorry, an ability called the goal of all life is death. Now mm-hmm. this ability strengthens the instant Poetic. death effect of magic and skills, bypassing any immunity or resistance and killing the targets within 12 seconds of that ability being used so he needs to pair it with a instant death spell of which as a necromancer he has a ton <laughs> and that will absolutely kill anything that is affected by that spell it does not matter what it is uh the description from the text let me, let me look this up the description of the text was um the moment that he cast it the world died that was not a figure of speech everything in the area of effect had died even the air was devoid of life and perished turning the 200-meter <laughs> disc diameter into a space where breathing was impossible. Not only that, the land died as well, the entire space instantly turning into a desert. He killed air? Yes. Wow. It is not <laughs> possible, not possible to resist this, this, this okay. spell. But you said it takes 12 seconds. So, like, what are you arguing so, here that he gets at most, off, right? and then <laughs> Grim touches him, and then, they, then 12 seconds later, Grim dies? Like, I, I also want to point out could that, like, that uh, how, how, what was the range of that spell? It the range it, it, of the spell is, is contingent on the spell that he casts in relation to it. The spell itself is not. That, that's an ability. That's right. An ability so that you said he has a variety of modifier. Okay. So right. are there any spells that he has that are just a instant hits, automatic hits, yes. necromantic spells? Like, yes. you can't dodge but, but, it. It just but, he looks at you and it's done. So yeah. yes, but, but because of the ability, they take 12 seconds to occur. Now, the thing about sure, this is... The, the, the question is behind. not necessarily whether or not... That will affect him because if if it bypasses immunity, then it should. The question is, will he be able to hit him with one of those necromantic spells in the first place? Yes, yes, he should be able to. If to target Grim is five hundred times faster than light, then I don't, uh, I don't, and and Ein's is only supersonic. I don't see how he's. I ever guarantee you, I, Grim does not have his scythe at this point, Liam. That doesn't. He's it's not, not with the scythe. He just flew. <laughs> Come his, on. His flight is 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 on his own. Uh, also, <laughs> Grim can travel to a different dimension. Must be outside the range of of any of those spells. Mm. Completely different dimension called the Halls of Time. Find Einz's. Uh, every living being has a because they're he's the Grim Reaper. Every living being has a an hourglass which measures the their their lifespan, and then just smash it. <laughs> or be even more creative well, and like turn okay. it upside down, de-age Eins until to a point where he was less powerful and then come back. So here's the other thing, Liam. That's, that's spell crossing called... universe rules a bit, and I, I don't know if we can. It's all right though, say because that. Eins has a spell called Lopsided Duel that tethers him to the target, so Grim cannot teleport and get away from him. He will bring Eins along with him, and Eins is going to continue to count down those twelve seconds until Grim explodes. And that's then, a good response. That's, that's, that's interesting. But good. then Grim. But then if it's twelve, like, I'm, I'm just like. It takes 12 seconds to instantly kill Grim. It takes no seconds to instantly kill <laughs> the, the, the other thing like, is, Grim like, does not like, know. Like, real, 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 quick, happens, real quick, guys. I would like takes, to pause because I feel like 12 seconds takes, is a great way for me to segue 
into <laughs> if you want to have more than 12 seconds this episode is sponsored by blue chew that was an okay so whatever <laughs> <laughs> guys, com- <laughs> guys confidence can take you far in life it can uh, also help in the bedroom when it's time to step up to the plate that's where blue chew comes in making sure that you have that confidence for more than 12 seconds ah uh, there you go uh blue chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as viagra and cialis but as chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost you can take them anytime day or night and it's simple just sign up at bluechew.com consult with one of their licensed medical providers and once you're approved you'll receive your prescription within days and it's all online no visits to the doctor's office no awkward conversations no waiting in line at the pharmacy blue Chew's tablets are made in the usa and shipped directly to your door in a discreet package so if your tool needs an upgrade uh, blue chew has the gear you're looking for wink <laughs> if you could benefit <laughs> from extra confidence when it's time to perform blue chew can help and we've got a special deal for you try blue chew free when you use our promo code dbc at checkout just pay five dollars shipping that's bluechew.com promo code dbc to receive your first month free there's a bluechew.com for more details and important safety information thanks to blue chew for sponsoring the podcast for the umpteenth time now guys definitely check out blue chew they, they are very great sponsors for the show. Um, okay, so this this whole conversation has very hard. Has, uh, <laughs> uh, um, is is telling Wait, me that what? it's very complex. Like Grim has this sort of hacks sort of ability that he'll be able to theoretically just Singular? use the uh, ridiculousness of his magic to overpower or outspeed anything Eins can throw at him. However, Eins has a ridiculously large collection of overpowered abilities, spells, skills, uh, uh, features, etc. Um, that could potentially mean the end of Grimm if Grimm, to me, it sounds like at the moment, just makes a single mistake, it's over. Um, and it sounds like Grimm is pretty prone to making mistakes. <laughs> So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I want you guys to think about that. But, but for right now, I do want to talk a little bit about what's going on. Well, then, what's going on is... Skeletoma! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Ah, there it is. <laughs> I'm a yeah, uh skeletoma celebration <laughs> yes so again we are doing skeleton matchups all month and um i don't think we've actually mentioned this but it's gonna culminate in like a final battle sort of episode at the end so be sure to, to tune into every episode as we i am i am up telling to a you, tournament or something i'm not entirely sure what it's gonna be i am telling you that skeletor is the greatest skeleton of all time and i will i <laughs> oh skeletor it, it will definitely be skeletor well Skele- We're not talking about Skeletor today, Chad. We're talking I about I don't care. Skeletor. I'm telling you now. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe Skeletor will be in a future episode. I don't know. Yeah! But, <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be doing this. This is going to turn into something of a tournament, I guess. We'll, we'll see. Basically, by the end of this month, we will know who the ultimate skeleton character is. Um, I'm telling them all so it's Skeletor. We will be deciding <laughs> who goes to the end today between Ein's and grim um but also i did want to talk a little bit about trunks versus silver if you have not seen it this is when we're going to get spoilers for for that episode and what's coming next um uh if you have not seen it i i am super proud of the team that that worked on it i i was so happy um to see the reception to the episode um brandon's score for the for the for the fight is incredible if you have not checked that out please do so uh, it's called Hedge of Tomorrow, and I'm still not sure if putting that H just <laughs> out in front was really the best idea, and I will never be sure, but, you know, it's fine. That's <laughs> um, uh, but it's great. Definitely check that out. And, and of course, Luis, Gus, Zach, and the, and the team, uh, and, and Billy and the, um, the post team kicked so much ass putting the fight together. Uh, but also, shout out, like, I, I wanted real quick, just shout out, like, our research team. Um, cause Ooh. I feel like, like we, we don't talk about them enough I and mean, I know we do talk about them, but like, I, I feel like we need to talk about them all the time sometimes. Right. Cause they, they, they are so freaking good at this, this, this matchup, the, the whole point, the whole 
point of this matchup? I know we've said like, oh, we did this version, these versions of the characters because normal Trunks versus Silver would be a stomp. It's more complicated than that. Ultimately, um, we decided to do the Heroes version of Trunks, which is like Heroes, Xenoverse, Dragon Ball Online. It's a bunch of things um, versus the Archie Silver because it's just more interesting of a matchup to us than the um, uh, uh, normal canon Trunks versus normal uh, game um silver there's there's just a lot more to work with there there's a lot more of a question in how the abilities match up and there's just a lot more to consider and but but part of that of course means for the first time we had to dive into dragon ball heroes and dragon ball online and dragon ball xenoverse and liam as as a long-time researcher i'm sure you know that can get Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and especially because Heroes and, and I mean, Archie, I kind of knew from, from Wally versus Sonic, but like uh, Heroes, Dragon Ball Heroes was something I had no idea about. So it was hard for me to like follow with along with what a lot of the researchers were saying. Um, but it was because uh, there was just so much like Dra- I didn't know how big Dragon Ball <laughs> Heroes was. Like, I didn't know that yeah. it was like, a thing that's been going on forever now. I just didn't and it's not like a consistent <laughs> timeline either. There's not like a story, no, it's, like a consistent it's story. It's fucking incomprehensible. It's anime <laughs> Finnegan's Wake. Like, it's... <laughs> like, I don't know it's, anything. Yeah, there, there's so many things that tie in. Like, they invented Dragon Ball Online. You know, it's the, the online game. That, that was like, what, a decade ago or something like that? It was ages. It was a while ago. And then that spun off into Xenoverse. And then they made the Dragon Ball Heroes game. And then that created a Dragon Ball Heroes... Dragon Ball Heroes uh, uh, promotional anime, and then that went back to the game. Like, it went back and forth until Beat and Note were invented, which are completely new characters. It, everything got crazy. <laughs> um, to the point where it is still not entirely certain whether the Dragon Ball Heroes game in canon of Heroes is a time travel device or just virtual reality. Because it could be both. <laughs> like, why it's, not both? It's a myth, like, because it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It's all a big advertisement for a game, right? Like, right. so they're just making cool, like, fan fiction, fan service type episodes. That's really the point of it. And, and you know, it's pretty cool, but there's no real, I mean, there's a story. But you're not really watching it for the story. <laughs> you're, no. you're not really doing any of this Dragon Ball Hero stuff for the story. We also, I also, um, specifically avoided the script saying calling it by its full name i'm sure some people might notice it's called super dragon ball heroes um so we were making this episode and then i realized oh man dragon ball super superheroes just came out i really don't want to confuse people with what we're talking about (laughs) that movie just came out and i'm like why, why do they have super dragon ball heroes and dragon ball super superheroes because they love super (laughs) <laughs> they love it uh super saiyan god super saiyan remember when that was what it was called Sorry, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so in, in the in the episode we call it dragon ball heroes just to like and it's sort of a conglomeration of xenoverse online and all this other stuff um but it was really fascinating to jump into it but man it was a lot of work and our researchers kicked so much ass mm-hmm. putting yeah, all that stuff together and figuring out one. how to put the pieces together to figure out a winner. I going into this, I really did think like it was probably still going to be Trunks, based on like w- we had an idea that Trunks would probably win the like normal you know version of this. Um, but I was like, yeah. yeah, okay, Trunks probably still has it right because Dragon Ball Heroes is ridiculous. Um, so it was wild to me when the researchers came at us and was like, hey, you're wrong. It's this way, <laughs> uh, and we spent like an hour going over or I spent like an hour going over any possible way that maybe that could be incorrect. Like, like we do with every death battle research call, right. Uh, yeah. or, or research meeting, we try to, the researchers bring uh, a result, uh, that, that they've sort of determined. And then it's up to everybody else on the call to try to counter that and figure out ways to like argue against it oh, until all of us yeah. can come to one conclusion. Um, and, yeah, they kick so much ass. So shout out to the research team. They're all amazing. Um, please go check out that episode uh, if you have not. And the next episode, Liam, what the hell is the next episode? <laughs> the next episode is uh, <laughs> so is fun. finally fucking here. I've been waiting so long for it. Um, it is SpongeBob SquarePants versus 
Super Friends Aquaman. Aquaman. Uh, and I know a lot of people, as was very much expected, were uh, mind blown, hackling with glee, horrified, <laughs> uh, <laughs> mentally disturbed by by the reveal. It certainly, I I love that we that Gerardo like gave it like such a detailed like reveal uh, because it really is deserving of that. Um, the idea <laughs> is that we are taking like so obviously the connections between SpongeBob and Aquaman are pretty self explanatory, right? Uh, and it's <laughs> it's uh it's it's going to be an incredibly funny episode, but they're also the two biggest losers, right? SpongeBob is a humongous in canon dork dweeb goofus loser boy, and Super Friends Aquaman is where the Aquaman is lame meme originates from. So that was that was also something that I realized kind of after we had come up with that. That time I was like, oh, right, that is kind of a, a, an unspoken connection, is that they're, they're two underwater cartoon characters from two very different eras of animation, but they're both fucking doofus losers, idiot. It, it's it, it's and, a lot of fun. It's, it's definitely, it's crazy. Uh, I think, going to be one of our more creative death battles, um, and I'm very yeah. excited to see. Yeah. So Liam is directing that episode. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I wrote it as well. The a little, rundowns. A little interesting. A little interesting. Yeah. 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 It's a it's a little different from a normal episode. Um yeah. this is one of those episodes where we decide to get a little off the wall. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not gonna say anything else because because you guys gotta see it for yourself. Um it's 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 fun though. We, we had a lot of fun uh writing it and recording it and all the, the animation animators, team is we've had so much fun talking about it during reviews and and every shot Luis they bring in is, is very so fun great. to voice too. <laughs> yeah. Luis and Zach and Gus are all very familiar with these characters and so they are going man yeah oh it looks i'm gonna stop incredible. i'm gonna stop there before i spoil it I'm yeah, gonna, it looks never nuts have yeah. you seen the have you seen yeah. the biz post shots the biz post shots are nuts no i haven't i just saw some so of the gorgeous. luke animation stuff yeah. that leo yeah. that luis was showing me it's oh, yeah. anyway get ready guys this is gonna be a fun okay. one <laughs> all right so by that the way is coming ben, up the, yep go go ahead, oh i didn't mean to interrupt you but but, but I, I just wanted to say Going to Silver Trunks real quick. Uh, my favorite thing is that people have still not found all the Easter eggs during the Crystal segment. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the time labyrinth, there's mm -hmm. um, there's some some special Easter eggs to be found. So go ahead and <laughs> check that out again. I Give didn't another see them view, until Cal. people were posting them, and I was like, "How the fuck did you guys see that?" I stuff? didn't. That's like yeah, I didn't I, see I them on the first it. pass. <laughs> Luis actually yeah. had to point it out to me, I believe, or, or maybe it was Billy. I can't we remember. We discussed it like way back when we were building it, and then that was the last I heard of it because we were moving so quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, go check out uh, again. Trunks versus Silver. Uh, um, and uh, SpongeBob versus Aquaman, the previews uh, for that episode will begin airing this upcoming week. And then the actual episode airs on the 16th, right? Yes, the 16th. Um, oh, man. Guys, did you know that we're going to have an, a death battle? Not this SpongeBob one, but another death battle air literally on Halloween this month? Oh. The 13th episode of this season is going to air on... October 31st. Whoa. What a, well, that's a little weird coincidence, huh? Interesting. I totally, well, we I totally didn't know about that. Anyway, we should move on. <laughs> Let's talk about the community not the, not the death episode, battle. But interesting. Okay. That's a good <laughs> okay. So let's let's wrap this up and get this vote going. Um, let's go ahead and bring the poll up for uh, the chat so that you guys can start voting. But I do want to make sure that Liam and Billy, you guys have an opportunity to sort of wrap up your arguments um, and say anything you haven't said yet. Um, so Liam, starting with you, is there anything you want to cover to start wrapping up the argument? Uh, I mean, aside from Horror's Hand, which is like, it's like their version of an Infinity Gauntlet, but it shows you your worst fear and it's so terrifying that it makes your head explode or something. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, I mean, kind of aside the point, like, like Grimm has an infinite amount of power is vastly faster can perform magic on his own even without the scythe uh has a match for every single thing Eins can do on a much higher level of power um and can't die like except for a spell <laughs> that takes literally 12 seconds to do versus grim who can instantly kill you because he's the grim reaper like i think that Eins has a number of like hacks counters but 
he doesn't have a counter for everything. He certainly doesn't have a counter for being blasted by this, like literally just like, whoosh, like that's that's done, right? Like the energy of the scythe is so powerful that that's <laughs> that's basically it. He has to rely on the gag of of Grim like losing his scythe, which only happens when Grim is not paying attention. Um, and if it's in a fight scenario, look, Grim has been the Grim Reaper has been reaping souls for hundreds of thousands of years <laughs> and lived to the end of time. Like I, like. Heinz is a fucking salary man. Like <laughs> he's like wow. some Japanese dude. Like uh, yeah, Grim is a, is a goofball and ha and can fuck up, but like he's still the god of death and has every <laughs> power imaginable, and is just better in every way. Like yeah, yeah that's that's I I would say Heinz is a level one hundred salary man. <laughs> which and which I saw somebody yeah. say that I guess he found ways to hack the game and get even stronger than max level. No, it's 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 that that was max level, and when he moved to the new place, that nothing was that strong. Just that's well, the nature yeah. What it sounded power. like was when the when the transition happened, the flavor text mattered just as much as the level, right? Yes, and so the flavor exactly. text of the Overlord is like ultimate Super power evil. will yeah. kill yeah. everything. And, so and Grim he, it also has just became those genuinely. Grim also has genuinely beaten people like Boogie, like Nurgle, like Jack. It's usually like it's a it's kind of a Dexter's Lab thing where Billy and Mandy like are often the cause of Grimm's headaches as often as it is Grimm goofing, right? Like it's not like and I use the Dexter's Lab thing because it's Dee Dee is often the one right, that ruins yes. whatever Dexter's plan is. Um, so I, I don't want to like overplay his fuck uppery. Like it's usually <laughs> their interference that ruins things for him when Grimm is on his own and is not being inhibited by that. He, there are times when he gets serious and actually like just demolishes people, drives them insane, controls their minds, sends them into a fucking hell portal. Like like Grim is a a genuine threat and, and yet, much more powerful. And yet, that. flip side of that, a sandwich the, um, stole his scythe. Yes, yes, an inanimate sandwich. Also, Billy, flip side of that, he was chasing General Scar. The most Scar impressive at the sandwich ever, I'm yes. gonna say. <laughs> he was trying to catch General Scar at the beginning of the movie by himself. I believe. No, Billy and Mandy got involved. You're, you're never mind. That's, it's, it's countering your, it's, it's your own point. But he did fail to get him. Um, so, look, Brian, can you pull up that, that AAA uh, physical uh, image if possible? So, Grim is not as fast as you're saying. Grim has lost multiple times to active physical sports to <laughs> this, old, this lady uh, who beat him in a boxing match. World that would just mean that she is as fast. No, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> that is it not would how not. fucking. That is not he, how that works. Routinely. I was going to say now this was multiple different humans. No, but it's this one lady. She's just, some sort of she's god. She's a regular <laughs> lady. She is a regular lady. That is the joke. He loses and gets hit by people constantly. He is taken out by physically normal human beings. That applies and the to hostile god who is not that fast. Speed. Constantly, he that applies that to every quick. character with super speed. <laughs> what, 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 how many examples do I need to bring up of a character with right, super speed? Right, but you can't, being get, like you can't claim something. this guy is faster than light when he's constantly in fights. That's exactly that is exactly what I'm. That is exactly what I'm talking about, though. This like how many times? Like, like, like how many characters can you? Like how does Goku get hit by anything by a character that isn't as, okay. as powerful as he is? Okay, yep, okay, you know okay. right? Like or Superman uh, or anything. Again, but, but like, before we start going in circles again, uh, let's go ahead and get that pull up um and 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 we're gonna go ahead and start getting the votes in chad start thinking about your vote i just want to give a quick shout out to our last sponsor uh for this week which is our friends at red web um if you're captivated by the unknown and obsessed over the unexplained phenomena if you frighten easy behold red web a podcast about unsolved mysteries true crimes conspiracies and the supernatural um, with an appetite for the unknown hosts trevor collins and alfredo diaz dissect a new unsolved mystery every week and this month they'll be exploring haunted houses like the blood house at fountain drive the winchester mystery house and the demon house of gary indiana check out red web <laughs> now available wherever you listen to podcasts and if you want to get to the uh the episode today early you can head over to red web podcast sorry redwebpod.com to check that out and uh, learn about all the scary demon stuff going on at Gary, I guess. <laughs> all right, okay, I got speaking the of demons, just like... remember, everyone, Grim's a go. loser. <laughs> 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 all right, go ahead, get your votes in. Let's start talking about this. Chad, where's your head at? Uh, well, do we have community answers that we need to do? Or no? Mm. Oh, right. I, think we I forgot yep. about that. 
I always okay. forget about the community answers. Hey, there they Michael, are. Uh, <laughs> so this is, says Grim Scythe can let him travel through time, hypnotize people, use the moon as a bowling ball, give people superpowers. No reason he couldn't do this to himself, and make things grow infinitely. Again, no reason he couldn't do that to himself. Not to mention his trunk filled with all sorts of magical Eldric bollocks. I don't know how he could lose this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, but we do have one for Eins, I, I believe. Uh, from Jive Talking says, Eins is immune to mind control to anyone who thinks Grim Scythe can help with that. Also, Eins has an ability that can kill everything. Not anyone, everything. It kills plants, animals, the ground, the air, everything. He can stop time and create rifts in space. He can summon legions of undead that follow his every command. Anytime Grimm's ever summoned something, it has never even respected him. <laughs> oh, I, I do have a question for you, Billy. Mm, the 12 funny. seconds. If he does the time stop, does the 12 seconds count for him? Or does you know, that also I've seen stop? A lot of, I've seen a lot of debate on that, and I do not know. It's never been, he's never done it because he's never what needed to What if Grimm does the time it. stop, right? Wouldn't that end the 12 seconds? For him, from his perspective. Presumably right? for him, but, it, yeah. you know, but See, here's the thing, here's the thing about the time stop. He doesn't power. know what that is. A clock appears behind him, and that's it. There's no information about what this ability is. He's not going to know it's an instant death, will kill you spell. It just makes a clock appear behind eyes. Yeah, but, but Grimm is, if Grimm is in a, in, a, in a fight to the death scenario, then he's going to want to kill his opponent as directly as possible, right? And he can kill yeah. Ainz in less than 12 seconds pretty easily. So if, if it don't... was a quick draw scenario... It'd be 12 seconds, you're going to die in 12 seconds, versus... And then <laughs> Unless it's over, time stop right? works with it, which it could. Does, does Ainz have a way to do a quick escape? Faster yes. than light. I, 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 don't, I don't know that I agree that Grimm's faster than light, uh, but uh, probably not faster than light, no. If he, but if he does try okay. to escape, then, then Grimm is no longer uh, tied to him via that, via that spell, and could then just go somewhere else. I think the spell would still go off even if Ein's left, as long as it's yeah. not a spell that okay. requires him to stay put. With all that in what mind, it, whatever. Chad, what are you thinking? Man. Oh, wait, crap. I forgot again. We have uh, community page answers as well, or, or poll as well. <laughs> let's bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Just forgetting about the community. All right, let's let's see. Oh, celebration. Hey. Yeah. Uh, Grim wins the first poll with 64% to 36. Okay. That's one vote for Grim. Classic wow. 64 36. There's no Chad. About that. What are you thinking? Finally, I think this I would be an interesting one that. to explore. I really like the really, like, the, I don't know. It's like this really goofy character versus this, like, dark, badass overlord, but they seem to have a lot of stuff that matches up. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Billy. I'm going to go with Toon Force on this one because it's just broken. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So I'm going grim. I think I think Grim sounds like he's a little too dumb to be able to pull this off, in my opinion. I think he has all the powers that he can use to do this, but I'm 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 getting the sense that I don't know if he'd actually be know how to or be willing to or understand how to like win a death battle properly. You know what I mean? So I think I'm voting for Ainz. I think he, I think his 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 skill set is just clever enough to 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 pull this off. But I I don't know. I could go either way. I'm gonna vote the, for Ainz. He's the Grim Reaper. Be willing to win a death battle. He's the <laughs> Grim Reaper. <laughs> he kills it. Yeah, but he has right. been fired, Leo. We got we got two we got two Grim, one for Ainz. Is... Let's go ahead and get the <laughs> chat poll up and see where we're at. Could be a tie or Grim wins. Oh, I killed it. What was that? What was that? We both, I saw we both it. ended it. It's okay. We got it there. Whoa. Whoa. Wait a minute. We have a Whoa. tie. Whoa. Wow, Ainz Billy convinced the, the chat, chat to go. I, you know what? Wow. I'm not going to lie. I think his intro had a lot to do with that. <laughs> his intro was excellent. Yeah, was his intro maybe, was maybe. excellent. You know hey, what? That, that might also be my defense. If was tied up in winning this, then I would have voted for him. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> so, in a tiebreaker, it comes down to our director of the show, uh, Brian. Who do you yes. got? Who are you voting for? Your best mm. friend, Brian. Well, what do you think? Ah, oh, Brian, oh, you, you never voted me! <laughs> really? <laughs> wow! What a surprising upset at the end! Well, oh my god! Oh, oh, huge first, first episode of this show and have him. Yeah! Ainz <laughs> was the first round of Skeletober Skeletobration and is going on to the final matchup. 
which will be on the last uh on 20 on october 25th that's when it will be i had to look that up it will be the last skeletober celebration all right so Ainz will be fighting who knows we'll see who Ainz is going to be uh paired up against in that episode later next week we will be doing a brand new skeleton matchup which will be Ghost Rider versus Sand. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. I thought I had it written down somewhere. I, did I thought you were Ghost trying Rider to create some Sands. drama. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Ghost Rider versus Sands is what we'll be arguing for next week. I know. It, chat, it's a weird one. <laughs> chat is popping off. Some people are very pleased and others are very upset. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should I'm do really... this episode for real. Yeah. This, the record, this hurt my soul. Real. This hurt my soul because I love Grim and I love Liam. So I had two things I had to go against that uh, <laughs> I like very much. A 30 minute animation of Grim just like stomping <laughs> on the yeah. fucking <laughs> dirt. Just Written by right. Liam Swan. Shock for shock, blackout intending. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining our very first episode of Skeletober Celebration. I can't do the Skeletor vo voice, Chad. But Skeletober! <laughs> I am not nice. Yeah, I am not nice. <laughs> I am not nice. <laughs> <laughs> be kind to others, be kind to yourself, be awesome. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye, everybody.